This is BYU Sports Nation, brought to you by the BYU Store, simulcast on BYU-TV and BYU-Radio. Now, from Studio B, your hosts, Jerem Jordan and Jason Shepard. BYU Sports Nation is live. You did a play-by-play in Studio B, presented by BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. It is Wednesday, January 19th. Thanks for being here. I'm Jerem Jordan, teamed up with Utah Sportscaster of the Year, runner-up. Jason Chip. Yeah, I was uh, this close. <laughs> <laughs> this close, meaning I was not nominated, that I'm aware of. Yeah. Uh, but you know who was nominated? I do. And not only nominated, but won the 2021 Utah Sportscaster of the Year. Our very own Greg Rubel. Oh, very How nice. about that? There's Congre- his photo. Congratulations to Greg Rubel. Well deserved. The guy is the is a pro's pro, and I'm happy for him. That's pretty cool, man. Very cool. Our office mate won an award. We can't say that about a lot of our other office mates, including ourselves. You know what I mean? <laughs> we're just we're just here getting the job done. Greg's bringing home the hardware. So, well done uh, by Greg and everybody. Okay, here's the show lineup. The Big Twelve discusses divisions, number of football and basketball games, and more. What do we think? Plus, how excited is Jason Shepard? Uh, we'll chat with the guy who wrote a piece on it. Dennis Dodd of CBS Sports breaks it down. Plus, we've got the newest Deep Blue on one of the most beloved Cougars on campus right now. Fusini Traore, a Muslim at a Christian school thousands of miles away from Mali, but right at home. And how much would you pay for tickets to BYU Notre Dame in Vegas? Those tickets are getting pricey, man. But luckily for Shep, he's bringing home that, that lettuce. Here are today's headlines. <laughs> Also, you get the credentials, which allows you to be in for free. <laughs> Spoiler alert. Not to be, not, it's not a humble brag. It's just the reality of the situation. It was just a brag. <laughs> BYU basketball back at the Marriott Center tomorrow night, hosting the San Diego Toreros. Both teams sit at 3-1 and one in the WCC and are currently tied for second place. Head coach Mark Pope says the Cougars will have to be ready. They played great, and they're getting two guys uh, that have been out for the last six weeks, both back from injury, so they'll have their full roster. It's going to be everything we handle. Cougar pregame live on BYU Radio begins at 8 p.m. Eastern time. Countdown to tip-off on BYU TV starts at 8.30 Eastern. Tip-off on BYU TV and the app is at 9 Eastern. Can't wait for that one tomorrow. We're the pregame guys. We we got, got, we're the pregame guys. you. I got the radio side. You got the TV side. Let's go, man. Shayla Gonzalez is one of 15 players to be named to the Becky Hammond Mid-Major Player of the Year Mid-Season Watch List. I wish they'd uh, shorten that a little bit. Uh, and congratulations to Shayla. She's she's the real deal. And 17th-ranked women's hoops. The game at Pepperdine Thursday. Postponed due to COVID issues with the Waves. So, yeah. Uh, Cougars next play Saturday at San Diego. How about this? This is pretty cool. Former PGA Tour veteran and BYU All-American Daniel Summerhays has been added to the men's golf coaching staff. Yeah. Summerhays played in 215 tour events in his career, finishing with 46 top 25 finishes. The 2018 BYU Athletic Hall of Fame inductee will be involved in practices, team activities, and will have other coaching duties. Congratulations. Pretty cool, man. Very cool. Uh, Daniel Summerhays, I interviewed him in like, oh, Seven as a young sideline reporter, as a student here. Do you think he would remember you? It, nope. Yes, he would. And and uh, I well, he'd remember this moment because I I confused Jack Nicholson and Jack Nicholas in a question. By the way, I do fun. that all the time. <laughs> I do it all the time. I'm fully aware that Nicholas is the golfer now, but in the moment, I just don't. <laughs> uh, Yellow Childs had uh, 8.7 boards for the Salt Lake City Stars in his debut for the team against. Memphis last night. Hopefully Yoli can crack into the NBA at some point, perhaps with Los Jazz. That would L- be that L- would, Jazz. L Jazz, yes, that's how it works. And uh, his former teammate, Elijah Bryant, put up 8.7 assists and a rebound in a win yesterday in the Turkey Super League. Bryant is averaging 11 points, 5 rebounds, and 3 steals a game with his new team. Turkey Super League, that sounds like a uh, Thanksgiving football game. <laughs> All rise and shout. It's time for What's Trending. You're talking about it, and so are we. It's What's Trending on BYU Sports Nation. What's Trending is presented by BYU Food to Go, and the MVP of your next event. Okay, Dennis Dodd of CBS Sports produced an article yesterday highlighting discussions with the Big 12 regarding a myriad of topics, so let's highlight the good ones. The athletic directors of the league, including the new ones, and BYU's Tom Homo met in Las Vegas in December. We can confirm that. We know Tom went to that. The league is planning to split into two seven-team divisions beginning in 2023 when BYU's in it. Here's one proposal of a north and south. Let's walk through it. North, Cincy, BYU, Iowa State, Kansas, Kansas State, Oklahoma, Oklahoma State. Remember, 
Oklahoma and Texas are in it for two years until they leave for the SEC. Big 12 South, potentially, just an option. Baylor, Houston, TCU, Texas, Texas Tech, UCF, West Virginia. What do you think, Shep, of these division breakdowns? And this is, again, this is just an idea. This is like a report of what they'll be. Uh, this is the part that fascinates me. There's a lot of great information in this piece, you know, in terms of how many conference games are you going to play and what, what, how many games will you have within the conference and are you going to be able to – what, what it looks like in terms of non-conference. That stuff all works itself out. What I'm more concerned about and really has my attention is what the divisions look like. I want to know where BYU is going to be. And the, the one that you mentioned, the, the possibility, just kind of throwing it out there, that was in the piece from Dennis Dodd, who, again, is going to join us coming up in our next segment. You know, it's based off of a north and south breakup of the divisions. So the biggest question is, breaking is up? are you going to go oh. north and south? Or are you going to go east and west? Why not go northeast and southwest? That would be no just one's a little, little, breaking little, that little, down. little complicated. I personally would like to see things be an East division and a West division. Amen. And there are a couple of reasons for that. Number one, and I understand geography these days doesn't, doesn't matter a whole lot, but you are going to have, it, it makes sense when you have somebody so far West in BYU and somebody so far East in West Virginia and UCF that you do an East West. The other reason I would like to see that versus a North and South, if you go North and South, I think what you're what you're essentially doing is putting all the Texas teams together, and I know you like that or no? I do not like that. Oh, why not? For a couple of reasons. The number one is is from the recruiting standpoint. No, the number one is Ramsey's arms and legs. <laughs> so, what are you talking about? So I look at it, and this is not just a BYU thing. This would be anybody that would not be in in a division that would play against the Texas teams. You want to be able to tell recruits, especially because Texas will become a very fertile recruiting ground, yeah. and, and BYU does it now, but it's going to become even more important. You want to be able to say that you're going to guarantee games in the state of Texas every year. Well, and so I, guess, I, I guess you would if even if they were in the other division where you play but, three of them and you're probably playing, you know, I, 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 see I, I, I want point. I don't want to have the entire state of Texas all be together. I would like to have it split up so that you have some in the east, some in the west. That way, everybody gets the opportunity to guarantee games in the state of Texas. I don't now, think you understand how Texans think and feel. No, I'm they more, stick together. I, I'm aware of how they <laughs> stick together. It's why BYU isn't in the, the Big 12 Originally, already. Originally. Yes. Uh, so that, that's, why, that's why I would like to go east-west mm -hmm. more than a north and south. Yeah. But like I asked Coach Pope yesterday during the basketball media day because he had brought it up. Yeah. And I said, so do you have a preference, north or south? He's like, I don't. I just, I'm just glad we're in a division. That's all I care yes. about, and I feel the same way. Which is interesting because, and, and there's been some conversation about this, many men's basketball power conferences don't split into divisions for men's basketball. It's just one big thing. As it pertains to scheduling, certainly you have to figure out who's playing who and why this year because you can't play everybody. We'll break that down in a second. But, yeah, I'm with you. What if I told you that the West was with all the Texas teams? Would that be even then more I'm preferable? It. Then I'm fine with it. Because here's what <laughs> I it, want. If it's BYU, yes. then I'm fine with it. Of course. What, what's the, there's BYU a million times in the set. Okay, the divisions. West, this is what I would prefer. BYU with the four Texas. I'm talking post-Oklahoma, Texas leaving. Which, by the way, I don't. they'll probably split them up so they don't have to reshuffle the deck is one report from this article. BYU with the four Texas teams. Texas Tech, TCU, Baylor, Houston. And then throw Oklahoma State in there. That that would be – so you have two of the four new. You split the two, two new in each division. Four Texas schools, BYU with Oklahoma State. That would be awesome, right? The other division could be East. UCF, West Virginia, Cincy, Iowa State. And then you keep Kansas State and Kansas together. So you have two new. You split those up. You keep Kansas, Kansas State together. That that would be my preference. Um, I could see the one where you, they with you they go two Texas, two – uh, you know, in each division, the two newbies, and then you have to figure out what you do with the uh, the other four there. You keep Kansas, Kansas State together, and then then uh, see. I think if, I think if you're going to split up the Texas, else. and I think this was an early, early one we saw. I think it makes a whole lot of sense that two of the Texas teams that would come with BYU in an East West situation would be TCU and Texas Tech. Sure, Th that makes that makes sense to me. The mo two most Western exactly. Texas teams. Yes, and again, I understand that the the, the, the 
that geography just isn't what it used to be in terms of, oh, well, you can't have that. That doesn't make sense geographically. Right. If we had, if we we're rolling out in hand carts, maybe no. <laughs> yes. But we do have airplanes, which is pretty cool. Well, and the, and the cool thing about this is Dennis mentioned in the piece that these talks began about a month ago. I think uh, everybody from all the schools got together in Vegas. In Vegas. And then and Tom was like, here, let me show you around. <laughs> he's like, trust me, I know this city. Um, it says this could all be finalized by May, which is really quick. Yeah, two other quick notes. Uh, they're talking about nine football conference games, probably a six in your division, three split, I would imagine. Then men's basketball, still 18 games. 18 is pretty standard. Um, and if you have, you know, 12 teams, uh, you know, you play, uh, you know, two uh, twice home and road, and then you play six just like home, three home, three road. You know, you just figure that out. So And that could, keeping their, that could be their scheduling deal with the SEC as in well. In January. So that just means you start conference play a little earlier. Yeah. That's all that means. Okay, our question of the day. Which Big 12 teams do you want to see in the same division as BYU? What, what's exciting is we may know this in May. Um, they want to figure this out like a y- full year ahead of time. Which, which is, is great. Exciting. You, can, you can just yeah. check that off the list. Like yeah. one thing done. Yeah. Not have to worry about it. Let's hear from you in Voice of the Nation. This is the Voice of the Nation on BYU Sports Nation. Weigh in on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. Taylor Acton on Twitter. TCU has to be the first team that comes to mind. We have the most history with them. Keep UH in the other division to keep the Cougars apart. I see what you did there. And for two years, give me Texas. All else is gravy. Oh, and uh, KU for the annual win. We're talking football, not basketball there, per se. Although that could be fun. Alec Watson on Instagram. TCU was uh, whack Mountain West rival. Um, yeah, there was history in the WAC. I forgot. Not just the Midwest. And I want to renew the rivalry. Gary Patterson's not there. So it's not it takes a quite little bit the away same, from it. Yes. But yeah, I, there is a history there. So, um, but yeah, is he, is, He's did he join get the added Tex- to the Texas staff? I don't staff? think it's official, but it certainly was a feels discussion. like it's happening. Yeah, interesting. Gary Patterson with the Texas Longhorns. How about that? The heck of an analyst, if that's what yeah. it is. Not even a DC, maybe? Oh, wow. Not bad at all. Okay. All right, coming up, is Kalani Satake's stock still rising? Yeah, says who? And Dennis Dodd of CBS Sports breaks down the latest in the division conversation and the NCAA convention that could reshape athletics uh, collegiately. That's coming up this week. This is BYU Sports Nation. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by BYU Food to Go, the MVP of your next event. Professor Rock here. The Food Nanny. Chandler Scott here. Samri. Hey, everyone. Hello. I just want to tell you about this amazing, excellent, cool account called My Style. My Style Checking. I'm talking travel points, gift cards, concert tickets. All just for using my account. That's My Style. So check it out. Give it a shot. Open your My Style Checking account today. Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. 
Join us tomorrow for a matchup of second place West Coast Conference teams as the men's basketball team hosts San Diego. Coverage begins at 8 Eastern on BYU Radio. I'll have Cougar pregame live for you. And then at 8.30 Eastern, with countdown to tip off on BYU TV with Jerem Jordan and Tyler Hawes. Right now, San Diego in second with BYU. It's not San Francisco. It's not St. Mary's. So uh, the trail surprising some people early. Granted, haven't played uh, any of the big four yet in the league. They have uh, won three in a row. So yes. they're on they're on a hot streak. There you go. Okay, we are live in Studio B. Jerem Jordan alongside Jason Shepard. Let's bring in our guest of the day. His name is Dennis Dodd, National College Football Writer for CBS Sports. Produced an article that is... The crux of our discussion today relative to the Big 12 and the discussions. Dennis, welcome to the program. It's a pleasure to be here, Jeremy and Jason. Uh, I miss Provo, I miss Salt Lake City, and I miss Utah. Well, we'll have you as soon as uh, you'll be here. Uh, so next opportunity, come into town. Okay, let's talk about the article you put out yesterday. Of course, BYU fans interested in the, uh, you know, the future Big 12 divisions and conference games in football and basketball. So what were some of the highlights, in your opinion, of the discussions that have been had? Well, with, uh, with Texas and Oklahoma, by all accounts, staying to the end of the Big 12 contract, that would be through the 24 24- football season, 24-25 basketball season, um, there had to be some accommodations made and uh, with the, uh, you know, the, the four new teams coming in. And if they do come in by 23, which all, all indications say they are now, uh, there are going to be 14 teams in the Big 12 for, you know, for 23 and 24 football. Uh, might be awkward, but it still has to be accommodated. And NCAA rules say that any conference with 12 or above has to split into divisions. So they've actively, uh, Big 12 people that are modeling this have actively talked about it. Um, they haven't gotten to the step where they're, you know, deciding what teams are in what divisions. There are more discussions now about number of conference games in basketball and football, uh, road trips, competitive balance, stuff like that, uh, to the point that, there's like a six person committee doing this. There is a person, there's a deputy AD from Texas, Sean Eichhorst on the committee, but no one from Oklahoma, which I thought was, was interesting, not mm. necessarily controversial, but you know, I think they, they are represented. Those two schools are represented. Um, so it's going to be really fun. It's I, I, I think for two years, you know, do you put uh, Texas and Oklahoma in separate divisions? Do you do like the big 12 did for 15 years, put them in the same division in the South where it was more split up geographically, do you split the divisions up uh, competitively? And the biggest thing I think out of all this, and I, I don't think I even touched on it, was that this gets rid of the situation now with the Big 12, where they match their two best teams every year in a 10-team league. Helps with bowls, helps with the CFP competition. You know, you, you may get back to the old problem the Big 12 had, and that's a big reason why they're here in the first place. They had a lot of upsets over those first 15 years that knocked potential BCS teams out. Um, and in the case of 2003, didn't knock Oklahoma out. They lost and still remained number one in the country, believe it or not, after losing to Kansas State. But be that as it may, in any given year, in those two years and going forward after that, you could have an eight and four team beat an 11 one team. And where are you then with the playoff? You know, Dennis, doesn't it make, and, and you referenced this in the piece, doesn't it make the most sense though, especially because you're, you're, you're planning short term with Texas and Oklahoma here and then long term when they leave, whenever that is to have them in separate, in separate divisions. That way, when they drop out, everything stays even. Don't you think that's probably the way this is going? I think it will because, yeah, you're right. I referenced it in the piece where think of it as a Jenga model. You know, if you just pluck Texas out of, let's say, the South and Oklahoma out of the North, and you've already done the competitive thing, then you just move on uh, and the tower, the Jenga tower doesn't fall. So I think that's wh where they're headed. I think that makes the most sense. You don't want to have to rejumble things. Um, re as one source told me, you don't have to reshuffle things after those teams move on to the SEC. So, yeah, definitely, I think that makes the most sense. Although it would be funny because the Big 12 is pretty petty and vindictive towards Texas and Oklahoma if they put them in the same division and then they never played each other for a conference championship and you would ensure a, they... A source mentioned that right? to me. He, he was kidding. I think he was kidding, but he didn't mention <laughs> 
And and BYU would love to be in the same division as Texas because there was some real success there in 2013 and 14 with Taysom Hill. But, yeah, BYU fans are excited regardless of how this shakes out. Was there any discussion relative to, and you mentioned in the article, nine conference games. Would that mean you'd play the other six in your division and then I assume three from the other division? Is that probably what happens? Yeah, I didn't get that far, just that they're probably going to stick with nine for now. Um, but, yeah, that would make the most sense. You know, I you play everybody in your division that legitimizes a conference race or a division race, excuse me. And then you just have a rotating three from the other division. I'm trying to think back in the old big 12 days, whether they did that. Uh, I don't, because Texas and Oklahoma were in the same division, they didn't have to get um, uh, dedicated rivals from the other division. So I think they did do, I think they did actually, they did five plus three. They were only playing eight games back then. It's only since they went to the true round robin, they were playing nine. So this would be six plus three. And I think it makes a lot of sense. I, I don't know, you know, there's going to be no uniformity from conference to conference. I know the big, uh, the Pac-12 and the Big Ten are talking about actually going back one game and playing eight conference games. And that's a philosophical difference that they're, you know, they're trying to build up these non-conference games that they're going to try to arrange with each other in this so-called alliance that we've read about. But that's, that has nothing to do with the Big 12. I think the Big 12 is better off playing nine conference games because it's a hell of a league and it helps their schedule strength. You know, Dennis, one of the things that we've really been focusing on the most here is, is what those divisions look like and obviously where BYU is. And, and not so much you know, where BYU is, but what, what the breakdown is. Is it north-south? Is it east-west? I, I still think because you have West Virginia and Central Florida in, in the mix and then BYU all the way out here in Utah, I personally think it still makes the most sense to go east-west. And, and I think the other reason is that allows people to still have a footprint in Texas uh, because you don't go north-south where maybe all the Texas teams are in one division together. W where do you think they're leaning that way? And, and what's your opinion on that? Do you believe it should go north-south or east or west? It's completely up in the air right now. I ask about that. You know, there's another thing about this. Do you do it geographically? Or you do, do you try to match it up competitively? Do you try to give West Virginia a travel partner in Cincinnati in the same division? Um, do you keep Oklahoma and Oklahoma State together for that uh, for those two years or not? Um, I, I, I put out the divisions yesterday, just geographically, north and south, just because that's the way it used to be. And I tried to match it up. In the south, I had Baylor, Houston, TCU, Texas, Texas Tech, UCF and West Virginia. So UCF and West Virginia kind of there in the east. In the north, I had Cincinnati, BYU, far flung, but you know, you're going to have that in this league no matter what. Uh, Iowa State, Kansas, Kansas State, Oklahoma, and Oklahoma State. At the last minute, I swapped Oklahoma State for TCU. And I think it would be more balanced if you can, you know, gather this, uh, imagine this in your head if TCU was in the north and Oklahoma State was in the south competitively. But you can, you can go any number of different ways. Um, one thing I would remind everybody is geography doesn't matter. There's a, the Big 12 plays in a league right now where it's West Virginia's nearest conference opponent is 900 miles away in Iowa State. So do you even consider, um, you know, BYU and Cincinnati having to travel for games, not only in football, um, but, you know, uh, you know, in minor sports, that's thousands of miles. I haven't looked it up, but, you know, I, they went all through this before they expanded, before they realigned, so they know about that. And then do you give West Virginia that travel partner in Cincinnati, which is fairly close? I think it's it's within 300 miles of each other, where now it's like 900 or 1,000 miles to Iowa State. So all that's to be determined, but at the end of the day, I think they're going to try to do it competitively just because of what I said. Geography's out the window. We already know BYU and Cincinnati are going to have to travel four games in every sport. So why not try to make it as competitive and strong in each league as possible? I can't wait for the women's tennis matchups between <laughs> West you Virginia, <laughs> you know, and BYU or whatever. Yeah, and I was waiting for legends and leaders. Why'd you leave that out? Come on, man. Okay. Yeah, well, I, yeah. let, let's talk about um, what you think the Big 12 will become. Um, right now, the Pac-12 eats its own. They don't do well in bowl games, and they're just not relevant. 
The Big 12 feels like it's going to be awesome. There's going to be a lot of good to very good to sometimes great teams. Do you feel like there will be a national championship contender, or is it still just kind of we're all just looking around at if Clemson's good and the, what the SEC produces for, a, uh, for the playoff actual contenders? Well, because Oklahoma's leading, I think there is that Pac-12 danger where everybody eats its own, you know, where everybody loses two games and you're not competitive. Uh, will Cincinnati be a national contender then? Um, will BYU? Uh, maybe this gives them the step up to be the dominant program. I, I think that's the kind of discussion you have to have without Oklahoma and Texas. You know, where is Matt Campbell at Iowa State at that point? Is he even there? Um you know, uh, Oklahoma State was within a, a bad, horrible uh, three yards uh, play calling in the Big 12 championship game of beating Baylor and going to the playoff. They, they are now historically the most successful program left in that league without Oklahoma and Texas. So you need one of those or two uh, to step up and go 11 and 1, 12 and 0 every year. Now, the, the upside of that is. In, a, in an expanded playoff, if and when it ever comes, and I'm not sure it will in any, you know, any near term, you can get there at 10 and two, um, or 11 and two, get, given the conference championship game, uh, you can get one of those 12 spots. So you don't have to have a one loss team every year. So, so the, that that part of it's kind of meeting the Big 12 in the middle, as well as the Pac-12. Um, so yeah, just you know, I, I think one or two lead, one or two programs have to stand out. And at the end of the day, the question still hasn't been answered, you know, whether this will be a power five league. I think it will. Um, but the only way we know for sure is when they sit down and distribute that expansion revenue that the Big 12 gets its own share and doesn't have to share, you know, 22 percent, which it is now with the power five. Uh, that That's when the rubber will re meet the road. And I think they will, because if for no other reason, you kind of see you know, I, I, I'm not saying they're doing this, you know, uh, intentionally, but Bob Bowles being Greg Sankey from the SEC are aligning over college football expansion. They were on the subcommittee that developed it, but I, it doesn't hurt Bob Bowlesby's stance that he's got a partner now, and I, hate, I put partner in quotes, <laughs> in the SEC and expansion. Dennis, when Utah went to the Pac-12 a decade ago, um, there were obviously growing pains going from the Mountain West Conference to the Pac-12. And I think that that may benefit BYU because they got an up-close and personal look at how what it took Utah to, to get to the point that they are now and some of the, the, the really down seasons within that conference. And I think BYU is much further ahead going into the Big 12 than Utah was going in to the Pac-12 from an overall athletic standpoint and uh, the, the department I'm speaking of, as well as facilities. In terms of BYU's fit, where do you think they fit going into this conference day one in both football and basketball? Well, traditionally and even now, um, with what Kalani has done, they are a national program. Um, in the old Big 12, you could you could tell recruits, because again, the guardrails here, are you can only take 25 in recruiting every year. Hey. You didn't go to Texas or Oklahoma, but do you want to play against Texas or Oklahoma? You know, what, what are those existing Big 12 schools telling? Okay, do you want to play against BYU? Do you want to play against Cincinnati? Do you want to play against Oklahoma State? The names aren't as sexy as, as they are now, but I think you can do something like that. There's going to be TV to offer, and I know BYU has its own TV deal with, uh, with ESPN, but this is going to be totally different. There's going to be money to be made. Um, beyond what BYU was making now. The, the number I hear for the Big 12 is might be about 20 million per school, which is a tremendous um, come down from the existing schools, but a tremendous boost for those four schools now uh, that they don't get. So I, I think I, BYU can do what it's doing now. They recruit nationally because of who they are. Um, they can recruit to a championship now. I think that's the biggest thing. You can you can compete for a, a conference championship, and within that, a spot in the playoffs. You know, do you want to go to the playoffs? Come to BYU. That's something you couldn't really say before. You could hint at it, and it was a long shot. But now it's much much more realistic.
Anything is possible, which is very exciting, and it's merit-based. Yeah. You win, you're in. Let's go. Um, we're talking to Dennis Dodd of CBS Sports about the Big 12. Let's talk about the NCAA convention as well. New constitution. Apparently power is going to be given to the divisions as opposed to the NCAA. Kind of what's going down this week, and how important and uh, you know groundbreaking is this? Well, not to bore people, but I'll just try to summarize it. <laughs> uh, maybe I will bore people, but – it, it comes down to this. Forget forget everything else. NIL, transfer portal, new constitution. The the NCA model is so out of whack and slipped into a r- irrelevancy so much that it's come down to two things really now for college athletics. Either they're going to have to collectively bargain with the players. That doesn't necessarily mean they pay them, but they could collectively bargain over things like the transfer portal. Hey, give us two years at a school. We'll give you X or congressional help. Um, and there's no sign at all that Washington's going to help in terms of regulating NIL. I know it's the wild, wild west. I know there's some things going on out there. I know BYU's at the center of some of those things that people really have some uh, doubts about, about the deal they've done in NIL. But I don't see any momentum in Washington and developing a federal bill. It may come. I don't know. And great if it does. You know, maybe they say, hey, you can only do X. Right now, all the NCA says in NIL is you can't do pay for play. Well, you tell me. A collective a collective has formed a Texas, which is paying their offensive linemen fifty thousand dollars each. Don't you have to do something in NIL before you get that? You know, and it pays all their linemen, not just the starters. So there's a lot of people um upset that that's a flat out inducement and i wouldn't disagree but it is the wild wild west and to get their arms around it there's going to have to be some regulation what this convention is about is deregulation For, again forget about nil and transfer portal and everything else you're going to see things deregulated that you never thought before um you know the baseball team that only gets 11.7 scholarships well if we have enough money why can't we fund 35 full scholarships and if you can't Oh, good luck. Um, you're going to see, I think you're going to see schools drop out of FBS, at least in the long term. Um, Power Five want more autonomy. They've got a lot of it right now and have since 2015, where they gained a voting edge on such issues. But let's take something like I just wrote a story this week about the ACC coaches complaining about not having enough players because of um, everything that's going on to field a team in spring practice. Uh, we all know what's going on, opt-outs, injuries, uh, NIL, not NIL, the transfer portal. How about if, you know, the FBS or the Power Five wants to go to 90 scholarships instead of 85? Well, as the voting structure sits right now, the group of five has enough leverage to vote that down, and they would because it costs more. But the, uh, the, autonom- the Autonomy Five, the Power Five, want more voting leverage because they can afford it. And they could pass the rule. Say there's 90 scholarships. And those who can afford it, afford it. Those who don't, what happens? They're at a competitive disadvantage. Maybe not this year, but in five years. And then eventually, and I'm just using that one example, you may have to drop out of FBS because you can't compete anymore. I think that's what we're going to see. Hmm. That's juicy and, and loaded. Dennis, we appreciate the time. Great insight into uh, the Big 12, the convention, and much more. We appreciate the time, man. All right. I appreciate it, guys. Thank you. Dennis Stout of CBS Sports. Loaded. That was a lot of great information. I was so excited when I saw that piece come out yesterday. Yeah. And I'm reading of through course. it. Of course. And look, and I'm even wearing Big the, 12 anything. I'm, I'm wearing the Big 12 shirt. Yeah. There we go. Uh, yeah, it's just amazing. And the fact that we're talking about this and we're every day we're one day closer to BYU being in a P5 conference. And I'm sure we'll break this much more uh, coming up tomorrow. But the NCAA convention and what this could mean yep. for the future of uh, athletics. Uh, BYU, of course, sends a, a representative and has a vote there. It's Liz Darger. Yep. Um, who was at the yeah, we saw her uh, last night. Know, banquet last night. So important stuff going down with the NCAA convention. Yeah, we didn't get to hit uh, the Chiefs game with Dennis. Uh, he's, oh. he, he's, he's in. He lives in hey. the greater Kansas City area. Yeah, a Dennis I like. Yes, Dennis. Yeah, so I was going to ask him we about We had the time Ch- for a Dennis. Chiefs, yes. Chiefs yeah. Bills didn't get a chance to do it. By the way, his son uh, 
works for, did work for the Kansas City Stars, son Rustin. Mm. Uh, and now with The Athletic, uh, he covers the Kansas City Royals and the Chiefs. So well, look at it's, you. it's in their blood. How about okay. that? Okay. How about that? Okay. You were especially excited. Big 12 and. Absolutely. All right. Coming up, Deep Blue with Big Foose. And how much are you willing to spend for BYU and Notre Dame in Vegas? We know what the answer is for Jason, but what are you willing to spend? This is BYU Sports Nation. I know what it's like to be overlooked, to be doubted, to fly under the radar. I only had one offer coming out of high school, but I was ready for every moment, every opportunity, and every shot that I got. Now I'm playing professional basketball, aiming to be one of the best shooters on the planet. And I'm just getting started. Be ready for your moment with Rapid Reboot, the future of rapid recovery. BYU Food To Go's convenient location at 2191 North Canyon Road in Provo makes bringing popular BYU foods to your next event easy. Everything's ready when you need it at the drive and load pickup. You drive in and they load no matter the weather. And stop in the on-site creamery for great BYU chocolate milk and ice cream. BYU Food To Go, bringing campus to your table. Call for details, 801-422-5001. Introducing the all-new 2021 Nissan Rogue. A fuel-efficient car that's compact enough to park just about anywhere, but has enough cargo space to fit your hobbies, your kids' hobbies, and your dog's hobbies. It's equipped with the latest safety and efficiency technology for a smooth and quiet ride wherever you want to go, whether it's through the neighborhood or across the country. Are you ready to Rogue? It's at Tim Daly Nissan Southtown. Familiar with the BYU TV app? Yes. I beg your pardon? Sure, it's got great original TV shows. But it also gives you access to family films for free. Wow. Awesome! So gather around, grab some popcorn, and let us do the rest. It'll be fun. Watch some of your favorite films anytime, anywhere. <laughs> with the free BYU TV app. I like it. BYU Sports Nation is brought to you by Marisk, enabling global trade for a growing world. BYU basketball with Mark Pope is available on demand. Watch as we recap the big win at San Francisco and then get a double dose of Foos in the film room and with his Deep Blue. It's available on demand via the BYU TV app. He's so awesome. His Deep Blue is coming up in the next segment. So stay with us. And uh, in case you missed the film room, fun conversation with Foos. He's great. He's Jason. I'm Jeremy. This is BYU Sports Nation. Don't forget to follow us on social media as well. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, YouTube, and TikTok. Let's whip it. Good Whip Round is presented by Maris, your integrated container logistics company enabling global trade for a growing world. We bring in our guy, Big Game Boomer, once again. Uh, Kalani Satake is fifth on the latest Big Game Boomer list that ranks the coaches with stock trending up. Mm. Is it still time to buy Satake stock? Probably. Look at what BYU's done the last few years. I could see the argument for a hold just to see what BYU does kind of once it enters the Big 12 and sort of that transition. Um, to expect 10 plus feels a little crazy, but if BYU can be in that 8 to 9 range and then occasionally get that special season right, now you're talking. But uh, yeah, certainly Kalani's stock is, uh, is high. It's whether you think it will continue to go up or not, a.k.a. will BYU continue to win 10 plus games? Yes, I'm still buying stock in Coach Tatake, and, and I, the reason you mentioned is the reason that, that I'm, I'm on board with it because now we've seen what Coach Tatake can do under these circumstances as an independent. I'm excited to see what he can do moving into the Big 12. So I'm, I'm, I'm buying that stock. Okay. Current uh, lowest prices, speaking of, for a ticket to the BYU Notre Dame game on SeatGeek is 293 bucks. Other sites have the cheapest ticket at 335 Would you drop 300 plus for a ticket to that game? So we're talking close to $300 for not like we're talking 50-yard line, you know. I don't know I think where. We're, I think we're talking like not great seats. Is that assuming? I don't Is that know. What we're assuming? I'm assuming nothing. Okay, uh, so the question, would I drop 300 plus for a ticket to the game? I already know the answer for you. Uh, I, know I would not because I don't need to. And you wouldn't. No, honestly, if I, if, if I didn't... If I weren't working and like it was an opportunity to see BYU Notre Dame, yeah, I, I wouldn't have a problem doing that. Yeah, totally. If if you've ever been to a you know a Broadway show or a playoff game or what, when when I was younger, I was in New York, 
and there was a playoff game for the Knicks and Pacers, and the ticket was like two fifty. And I was like, oh, that's a lot of cash early in the marriage, you know. Uh, but I was like, when am I going to be able to see a, a game at the Garden in the playoffs? So I just like dropped it. Did not regret it whatsoever. It I, I will tell you though, after covering the Utah Amazing. Jazz for 15 seasons, it pains me every time I have to buy jazz tickets. I know. <laughs> like really, you are spoiled as really a media does. member who also still goes to games. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, Yoli Child scored eight points. Speaking of the Utah Jazz, uh, scored eight points and grabbed seven rebounds in his first game with the Salt Lake City Stars, mm-hmm. the G League affiliate Why is of it the double Jazz. Z, by the way. We, I, gone away from it. That's 90s. It is. I know. It is so. It's so 90s. Uh, who has the greatest chance for an NBA 10-day contract this year? Yoli, uh, TJ Haas, or Jimmer? I'm surprised Jimmer hasn't had one. They're handing them out like uh, you know, free Slurpees on July 11th. Um, I don't. All of them feel like they have an equally good shot at something this year. Hopefully, Yoli gets breaks in. TJ's playing good in the G League uh, pretty often, so let's go. I'm going to say TJ, and the reason is because he's been in the G League longer and has a little bit more to be to, to show. Um, so I, I'm going to say TJ. I think he. Yoli, I think he, Yoli played last year in the G League. Oh, I understand that, but he's coming. He's coming off of an injury, so I'm going to say TJ Haas right now. He's got that new dad strength. Though. That is true. Just had a baby. That is true. BYU Golf hires former BYU golfer and PGA pro Daniel Summers as an assistant coach. Which other former or current pro would you like to see BYU hire as a coach? We just mentioned his name, Jimmer. Bring him. Let's go. <laughs> Jimmer. Bring him. You know, don't Jimmer, Jimmer goes don't on every spend time trip. doing scouting reports. Jimmer goes on every recruiting trip. That's that's what Jimmer does. You know what would be fun? <laughs> Steve Young or John Beck as the quarterback coach. That'd be fun. You just, drive, are, you just drive down the 10 I'm, hours to John Beck get out and get back. Jaron Hall still going to work with Jaron Beck. All right. UCLA head basketball coach Mick Cronin said he's excited to play at Utah this week so his team can run out of the tunnel to play in front of fans as opposed to empty arenas. Um, That poses the question, has Mick seen a game at the Huntsman Center recently? Clearly not. I think he's going to think they had a COVID cancellation with fans. Like, I thought there were supposed to be fans here. Where is everybody? Oh, they made you show a vax card or a proof of a negative test. I'm interested to see what the crowds are like this weekend, by the way. Yeah. It could be stuffed like normal. Could be a little less. I don't know what to expect. Uh, when I saw that tweet with those comments from Mick Cronin, I, I LOL'd. What, what did you tweet? You said, I tweeted, I said, someone tell him? No, I, my, my tweet was, who wants to be the one to tell him? <laughs> <laughs> they should just tell him it's a gymnastics meet and then everyone will show up. All right, come up. We take a look at the BYU Hoops resume update. And the newest Deep Blue featuring Fusini Traore. It's on deck. The Muslim who's at a Christian school thousands of miles away from home. This is BYU Sports Center. Hi, Spencer Linton here letting you know when your company joins the BYU team as a corporate partner, your brand can be featured in sports programming on BYU TV and BYU Radio. In addition to all of the great games, you can be part of the BYU Coaches Shows, place your message in Countdown to Kickoff, basketball pre- and post-game shows, and each weekday on BYU Sports Nation. We invite your team to join ours and become a corporate sponsor of BYU Athletics. For details, email sponsorship at byu.edu today. My name is Spencer Finnegan. I'm from St. Louis, Missouri. During my sophomore year, I got married to my sweetheart, Mary, and there's tons of unexpected expenses when it comes to marriage. We were looking for scholarships. I found the replenishment grant, and my local alumni chapter gave me a grant to help me focus in on school. I'm so excited to now that I've graduated, give back to those students that are coming to BYU in the future. crack. Wash all you want. Don't drive dirty.
BYU Sports Nation is presented by the BYU Store, official outfitter of BYU fans everywhere. 10th ranked BYU men's volleyball hosting 13th yeah! ranked UC Irvine on Friday. Watch the match live on BYU TV and the app at 9 Eastern with that guy. I can't wait to hang out with Steve Vale and Kiki Solano. It's going to be the side of the board this year, so it's going to be a ton of fun. Okay, welcome back to BYU Sports Nation live from Studio B. Despite being a Muslim at a Christian school thousands of miles away from Mali, freshman Fusini Traore feels right at home at BYU. This is Deep Blue featuring Foos, presented by Brady Industries, Simply Better. My name is Fusini Traore. Traore. I'm trying so hard to say his last name correctly. I, when he says it and I said, it, I'm like, it's the same. And he's like, no, coach. <laughs> so I'm working on it. People call me Fusia. Yeah. I'm from Mali, West Africa. Coming from like those super humble circumstances and then coming to the States, he has not lost one ounce of his hunger and determination, humility. So Fusa's journey started with uh, initially being introduced to me. And uh, when he came here, he was uh, able to live with the Zentner family. You know, we started to get pictures and we started to go through this process of, of okay, who is this, you know, boy and, and how would this work? And, and then it happened quick. Within about two and a half months, uh, Fus was, Mike was like, it's ready. In life, you don't get this chance twice, just one, one, one time, yeah. But if you say now, maybe you might not get another one. Who knows, yeah. And I was so happy. My family was so happy to me, yeah. I was so happy too. Because I would say life is a lot better here, and you got a lot of opportunity. Even if no, even no bus, just basketball, like school-wise too. When you got here, like diploma, you can go back in your country and be anything you want. We were there in the morning, got the got the visa. He said, "I need to go home and say goodbye to my family, my friends," and he literally met me at the airport with a backpack with maybe a, a shirt and one pair of pants and some shoes. And so it's middle of the night, you know, in, in the heart of winter, uh, December, and, and here's this boy coming that has never seen us, never talked, speaks zero English. <laughs> After I got here, it was like snowing like crazy. And I said, wow, what is that? Like, it was freezing. I said, I'm not used to that. You know, just an incredible amount of, of faith and hope in Mike and what he could provide for these boys and, and trusting that he's lined up these families that would be impactful for, for Foos. And, and we just feel, you know, tremendously grateful that, that we were able to play that role. They grew to love him very much, and he felt the love. And then when they moved, the Saunders uh, invited him to live with them. They had such a big impact on him as well, and they had a son that played with Foose as well. And then for the next year and a half, he was um, in our home as he was a sophomore and a, a junior at the Wasatch Academy. And he was, uh, which was a privilege for us because Richie, in going there, didn't know anybody. And then he ha had Foose to be in the home with him as his, as his friend, his brother. And so he's got a pretty big um, fan base now, so to speak. And uh, they all love him, and he's lucky to have such a large extended family. I miss my family, but I never feel like I'm alone, you know, because of my host family, Zentner and Sanders. Like, they're always, always there for me. So Foose has influenced us all in a lot of different ways, but how he has influenced me the most, I would say, is just the bravery. The bravery that that he came with, that what it takes to, to leave your family and come to the United States to try to, to create a life for yourself and for your family and your country and to make them proud. And he has handled it as well as anyone. And, and it's inspiring to us, to me, because Gosh, it's, he's been asked so much, and he just handles it so well. I'm Muslim. 
first year, and in my belief, like, is we need to be kind to each other and always pray. Like, I'm always trying to be, like, the best person as I can be. I think Foos is without guile. And it, it, when nobody's looking, you can guarantee Foos is going to do the right thing. He's just that committed to correct principle. And there's, there's no question when, when the crossroad is in front of him and he has to choose to, to go to the left or, or to, to go to the right, he's going to choose the right way because he knows in his heart that it's the right way. And he, he's a man that doesn't compromise that way. And I think it's been inspiring. It's been inspiring to anybody that knows Foos. He had four top 25 teams uh, offer him, want him, and, and two of them were exceptional fits. They were very good fits. But when it dials back to what's important to Foos, you know, we had academics, we had a coach relationship, we had some different pieces with that, um, and, and where he fit, you know, in the program. But he analyzed it all out and then prayed about it. It was very difficult, and after, like, I said, okay, like, tonight I'm gonna pray and ask God, yeah. And I just pray and went to bed. And the first thing in my mind tomorrow, that's where I'm gonna go. Next morning I wake up, it was BYU, you know. I just call everybody, call BYU. This time I'm, I'm committed. That was it, was, it was one of the best things in my life, yeah. It, it speaks to his purity and that relationship, but it was cool for him to grow into this another level of, of an individual relationship with God, and it's something he took really serious. He has taught us devotion and expanded our view of, of religion and God and faith, and we are very grateful for that. And I hope that we've expanded his view of faith and devotion as well. Like, right when I come here, like, kind of, I never feel enough, you know? Because, like, we always got each other back no matter what. Like, here is always, like, it's feel like real family, you know? You never feel enough. Like, if, even when you do something, like, you, you already know your, your, your teammate got back, you know? That's why it's just so special here. Yeah? It's very special. Foos, man. How do you not love this guy? And uh, I've said it many times up here. <clears throat> There's a place for everybody at BYU. There's a place for a Muslim from Mali. And he fits in perfectly yes. here. And he's an amazing person. And we're just scratching the surface with what he can do as a basketball player and as a person. Like, I entered the room to record the film room Monday, and he was just like, what's up, Jerem? And it was just like, oh, I'm so excited to just hang out with you. It seems so uh, nice, so genuine. Beyond anything that he will ever do on the basketball court, he is a person that you pull for as a human being. Yes. He is phenomenal. And honestly, um, it, was, it was cool to see him pray, right? It was cool to see him be him. Um, and, and he's just an awesome dude. Uh, very excited about the future of, for uh, Fusa Bioya. Absolutely. Coming up, a rise and shout out to one of our own. Did the Cougars go up in net? We'll update you uh, on the resume update with BYU Men's Basketball. This is BYU Sports Nation. Foos! Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork offers a large inventory of Ford vehicles, including a selection of cars and trucks, providing a range of transportation choices. From the Ford Fusion sedan and the Edge crossover SUV to a range of pickups, including the F-150. Each product line comes with options to enhance performance, comfort, and safety. Think Ford. Think Tim Daly Ford in Spanish Fork. BYU TV because it has good programming uh, for all family members, aligns to my values. BYU TV really does help me with my parenting. It helps me show my kids good examples of the way that we should live. 
no matter what you watch or listen, you always live uh, feeling better. All of us together. There are things happening in Seaburg. They care more about people spending money than they do about people getting sick. If they're causing toxic pollution, it is everyone's fight. We can't just let them get away with it. If anyone can figure this out, it's my brother. Friends don't abandon each other. Fine. Be heroes. I know what it's like to love someone so much you'd do anything for them. Whatever happens, I'm glad we're facing it together. Me too. This portion of BYU Sports Nation is presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. We are milking that photo. BYU Sports Nation, always available on demand via the free BYU TV and BYU Radio. I love that thing. That's a great picture. That's my frame, by the way. So uh, whenever we're done with that, I'm going to use that. You can also download the podcast. Just Google BYU Sports Nation podcast. Don't forget, subscribe, rate, and review. JK, that one's super cheap. Uh, it's time for the BYU resume update. Let's go. Uh, Net. 26, stays the same. 26, amazing. Uh, Ken Palm, 22, that's down one. Top 25, let's go. Team rankings, 80% chance to make the tourney. That's up a percent. And Bracket Matrix, it's now a 7.86 seed. It is climbing up. Could BYU possibly get a 7? If BYU is projected for a 7, that means they'd get an 8, probably, because of Sunday play. That San Francisco victory was so massive. It was massive. It was massive. San Fran's good. I admit it. Uh, are they going to make the tourney? Hopefully. That would be great for the league. That would be awesome. Our question of the day, which Big 12 teams do you want to see in the same division as BYU? Our elite voice of the day is presented by Sundance Mountain Resort at uh, BubbleNet. Any, we're in the Big 12. <laughs> do you feel the same? Like, are you are you particular about how it shakes out or are, look, you, are would, you cool? I certainly have my opinion on what I would like to see the divisions look like and certain teams that I would like to, to have in the division. But at the end of the day... Just being in it, that's the important part. Okay, if they announce today, okay, BYU's not in with any Texas team, are you still okay with it? Of course I'm okay with it. Okay. I wish that it wouldn't be the case, yeah. but of course I'm going to be okay with it. I'd be surprised BYU's not with the Texas teams, given the geography there. But if they go complete north-south, see, I, ju- they, I there honestly, could be an issue. I do not think they're going to lump the Texas schools together. I don't think that's the way this is going to play out. I think they split them up? I think there's enough people, and I'm not even talking just BYU, I'm talking all the other schools that don't want that to happen as well. Interesting. Okay, today's Rise and Shoutouts are presented by Mountain America, the official credit union of BYU Athletics. Shout out to our guy. We mentioned it off the top in case you missed it. Gregor Bell, 2021 Utah Sportscaster of the Year. Hardest working man in the biz, man. He is, he is constantly doing uh, play-by-play to four different teams during the year, and then he has three TV shows, <laughs> two coach shows and coordinator's corner. That's a lot, right? He teaches, teaches on campus. And he teaches a class, by the way, on campus. There is nobody cool. more prepared for a broadcast than Greg Rubin. He's super prepared. That, that, yeah. is, that is the one thing that I will always take from Greg is yeah. his preparedness. He took that from Paul James. Yeah. Paul James was very prepared, and Greg thought, that's how you need to do it. And he stuck with it, and it's been awesome. Learned a lot from Greg. Fun no to work with love, Greg. love getting to work with Greg. Also, uh, shout out to BYU Women's Soccer. They you had their, hosted. I got the to host the banquet night. last night. Job. Yeah, it was great to celebrate the 2021 uh, National Runners Up. Yeah, what a team. Our thanks to today's guest, Dennis Dodd. Yeah, conversation continues 24 7 on Twitter, Instagram, and <laughs> Facebook. Use hashtag BYUSN. For Jason, I'm Jerem. Shout out to Jason Skukanik, Vancouver, Washington, baby. See you tomorrow for BYUSN. Go, coach.